Hello guys, in this video we'll learn how to manage secrets be it passwords, API keys, tokens or any such credentials of our backend service using Vault in Rust. In a previous video we discussed to manage our configurations with Tomil and Console KV. Now we can place our configurations like username, static service URLs, a retry account, timeout and all those configurations in a Tomil file for tab environment and console kv for production environment but when it comes to secrets for example passwords token uh, or api keys or any uh, such credentials we need more access control for both application and users and we need more secure access while even we are trying to read those credentials so for that we'll use another tool from HashiCorp, which is Vault. So Vault, just like console, along with different features that it provides, also provides a KV store where we can store and retrieve our secrets with some access control uh, for both application and the user, which we'll see in a minute. So as always in my videos, we'll not be going through any installations or any uh, complex jargons. We'll just spin up Vault uh, using the docker containers and then we'll uh, get an overview of vault dashboard where we'll also add our credentials and then uh, we'll add some credentials in our application and then we'll read and access those so let's begin i'll be using the same project that we used in a previous video when we integrated with console kv to manage our production configurations using console kv in this video, we'll integrate with Vault and manage our secrets. This will also give you guys an idea that in a production environment, how can we have console and Vault running side by side, where we'll use console to access our configurations and Vault to access our secrets. So if you haven't watched that video, it should be popping somewhere on right top. Click it, watch it. it it's one of the most important videos going forward we'll be using in our microservices so make sure you watch it so first of all move to the project explorer and here in the docker compose along with console we'll also spin up vault so we'll just use the docker image vault and image i'll be using vault 1.13.3 as the latest tag depending on uh, when you are watching this video the uh, latest tag may be different so container name is vault and then we'll bind it to the default port and we have to pass a few environment variables so the first one is vault address this will just set up set it to 0 0.0.0.8200 similarly uh, vault api address which will be used by vault client and code or you can also request using apis uh, through postman using this uh, base url uh, for us here in the dev environment these both are same but for your production environment what could be different and then there are different ways to authenticate uh, for now we'll just use uh, dev root token id and set it to root and then we'll add cap add uh, for docker to not write our credentials in disk which could uh, give uh, use uh, basically unauthorized user some access so we'll set it to ipc lock and then we'll mount the volume so vault data to vault data and then we we'll just set it here vault data so that's all that we need here now in this project we are just spinning up vault and console uh, using docker compose but going forward uh, i'll be creating a playlist on microservices with rust uh, where we'll also use the kubernetes environment and there we could run console and vault as a sidecar of our service so for now open your terminal and just do docker compose up minus d Okay, 
here you go we have our vault and console up and running now move to any of your favorite browser once you are in your browser head to localhost 8200 or any other port where you have exposed your vault address and as you guys can see we are required to sign in to get into the dashboard and the method uh, there are different token username ldap octa and uh, github and different other techniques but for now uh, we'll be using token and we'll use the same token we passed to our uh, container so sign in and here you get secret so go inside secret and here we'll add our secret so just like we had uh, for configurations in console we'll use the same pattern so services and order service and then secret and here we can have let's say an api key which is like uh, one two three four as you can see similarly add a, a password so or let's let's call it db password which is any random string let's say and then let's say we have a, a jwt signature key let's say and again something random but as you can see we can add our secret data here and save it so there you go this is our path and this is our secrets we can also have a json view of our data so as you can see this is v1 like uh, version control says v1 of our uh, secrets and you can also manage access uh, for your uh, vault but for now we'll keep as it is and secret services order order service secret and here we have stored our secrets so let's get back to our code and let's see how can we read and access uh, these credentials so let's get back to our id first of all move to the cargo terminal file and here we'll add a couple of dependencies that we need uh, one is vault rs which is a crate for vault client so we don't have to you know use a request or any other http client to send vanilla requests and then we need tokyo with version as latest and features as full so once we have our dependencies ready we'll move to the project and here in the last video we added this config reader which has a console client and goes to the console client and reads our config sets it up now as i mentioned in the last video there could be tons of different way how you want to serialize uh, your configurations to this object uh, same goes for vault but we'll be using one technique so let's get started so first of all we'll move to config and here we'll add a secrets object just like how we have different other configuration pub struct and secret and here we'll add drive debug we serialize and all the different secrets that we have so the first one that we had is pub api key as string and then we have a db password as string and then we had jwt signature key as string now you may have different other fields or in future you wish to add more then you can just add it here and then we'll just do pub uh, secret option secret and here we'll set it to default secret as none and for example for dev environment it's fine to even push it to the code so we can just do secret here which is same as this and here we can add let's say api key as i don't know uh, one two three db password as abc and then jwt signature 
key as uh, unknown let's say so this is just for dev environment if you don't want to add no need to add it will just default to none but for for production we'll just go inside our reader and here we'll add secret none now let's add our console uh, vault client so just like console client we'll add a vault client and uh, let's set up the vault client so first of all we need the token which will be passed from cli when we run on local but in your production environment we could inject into your environment uh, in your kubernetes environment which we'll see in the microservices video but for now we'll just inject through cli so we'll just do environment variable and let's say token unwrap uh, it's fine to panic here since uh, we expect this to be present so vault client vault client new and we'll just use vault client builder default and set address to http and we can use just the local and token to token build unwrap and this is our vault client now in the config reader along with console client we need vault client so just set the vault client Yes, last thing is this unwrap and now we can just do this okay so we have our config reader ready with uh, our vault client now let's read our configuration so first of all we need to change it to async since reading from vault is an async operation so right here we will just do is let's secret and our type so the type we are using is secret which is this one and right here we'll just do kv2 read and self vault client and mount as secret which is in the in the vault dashboard let me get back to the dashboard and show you guys okay so as you guys can see it's a secret and we'll be using this as the mount back to our id so we already added mount and now let's add our path which is uh, services ordering service and then secret this is what we want to read so here we'll just do unwrap await and unwrap so we get our secret and we'll just do config dot secret is equals to our uh, some secret so we set our secret and return our config and as you can see it's async so we move to config and here again uh, we have to ch change this to await and make this async and same when we move to our main where we read and print we have to change this to async make this tokyo main and here config new await we get the config and let's print the secrets so that's pretty much all that you need to do in the future let's say you have more secrets coming in into your application your microservices just add it here just add the field and that's literally all you need to do it will automatically read you don't need to write the serialization and deserialization code again and again you don't need to change anything just have to add your field that's literally all you need to do and make sure that since right now we are using a root user will have access to everything but in your organization in your production environment you might just get access to what's allowed for that service or the user to read so uh, again this will be injected which we'll see in a minute 
so that's pretty much all the changes we need to do now let's open our terminal and test it so first of all we'll just run in the dev mode to read our uh, secrets that we add in dev config which is these secrets so we'll just do cargo run white okay as you guys can see we have api key one two three db password abc jwt signature key is uh, unknown let's clear this now let's run in the release mode to access our production secrets which are on vault as you can see we go here in the release mode so first of all we'll inject the token and we'll just do cargo run release and quite okay as you can see this is the same key that we add on our vault uh, dashboard one two three four db password also something random so basically these are our uh, credentials as it is read from our production our vault and as you can see if we pass uh, invalid uh, let's say a token as you can see it clearly says that uh, 403 or permission denied so basically it's more secure and allows only secure access now make sure you understand everything if you have any questions feel free to leave in the comments or you can connect with me on my discord link in the description and i'll be using this a lot going forward in the microservices series that we'll be adding on our channel uh, i hope you guys learned something new Thank you. Bye-bye.